In Blender, almost everything starts from default queue. Let's start by deleting it. Move all other items to new collection to clean up our scene. Add a plane and subdivide it to just enough resolution so it can be raised to new heights later. Thanks to Voronoi Texture for saving lots of time and work for us. Very nice, but different than what we are looking for. Let's change the feature to distance to ease and see what it does. We can fix those straight lines by adding texture coordinate with noise texture and plugging it into vector of Voronoi Texture. Play around with scale, detail and roughness with combination of factor in the color mix node. You'll find the sweet spot with just enough of details for the ground crack. We don't want to retain all those noise details, so let's clean it up by adding a map range node. If I start to lower the from max value, those details begin to disappear. Lower it until only the lines are remain. In the references, you can notice that the middle section of each fraction is lower. By subtracting the previous node from the current one, we can obtain a result similar to the references. You can also control the intensity of the depth using color ramp slider. Switch to render mode to see how our progress is coming along. We can see that displacement is not working correctly. This is because displacement is supported only in cycles. Let's change the render engine to cycles with GPU compute. Also, in the material properties, change the displacement setting to displacement only. Now connect it to the displacement node and lower down the scale value. In the reference, you can notice that there is another level of cracks inside. Connect a Voronoi texture to math node with greater than. Connect the distortion to vector input and adjust the scale, detail and roughness. Dividing the result by noise texture seems to be a complete waste of time and computation. I believe it is entirely unnecessary. The details are scattered all over the plane, so let's create a mask to hide them in some places. Add a noise texture with a color ramp as a factor to mix the cracks result with white. Mix it with another set of cracks using a color mix node and change the blending mode to darken. Also, you can dilute the value of secondary cracks using factor. Add a subdivision surface to give it more details. We are halfway there. Now it's time for bumps and lumps. To create a bump effect, add a Voronoi texture with a noise texture as a vector input. Now connect noise texture to texture coordinate with object as a vector input. Now, add a vector math node and set it to add 0.5 and another vector node with scale after noise texture. I'm using power with an exponent of 2 to increase some contrast. Connect it to bump node and decrease the strength while inverting it. Now, let's create larger bumps with noise texture connected to a color ramp. Adjust the colors so that few spots are black and most of the part is white. Connect the noise texture to bump map node and plug the previous bump into normal input. Let's duplicate it to create another set of bump maps. This time, add a mapping node to give it some variation. Let's tidy up our nodes and also remember to invert the bump maps, which I forgot earlier. Now it's perfect time for creating texture for our ground. To create a ground texture, add a noise texture with color ramp and adjust the color value as you like. I'm going for a yellow tone. If you want to add different color for deep in the cracks, use mix color node and Voronoi texture as a factor. 
you can use color ramp node to control the intensity of the factor. Connect the result to base color in principle BSDF. Also connect displacement map to displacement in material output. And that's it folks, we're done here. The scene is quite straightforward. I have tiled up the instances of the plane that we have just created. In the background, there is a plane with fewer details and a material without distortion. And these 3D assets are from Quicksil Mega Scans. Quicksil Mega Scans is a vast library of high quality 3D assets and materials. In framing this scene, I have applied the rule of thirds composition to position objects. Additionally, I've utilized virtual lines created by the objects to guide the viewer's focus towards the scene's focal point. Composition guides are very helpful to create beautiful cinematic shots. So yeah, remember to use them while setting up scenes. Now let's take a look on a post-processing. Before anything, I gave our shot a depth of field using camera lens blur filter with depth map as a mask. After that, I added a subtle amount of dust in the distance by animating fractal noise. On top of that, there is a glow effect. Then I animated the distortion to create the illusion of heat haze. The distortion map is simple animated fractal noise with depth as a mask. The pictures taken by the camera are not as sharp as render images. So to mimic that effect, I have shifted the channels using a 3D glass filter. Finally. I did some color corrections to give it a slightly warmer tone. If you think you have learned something, please consider subscribing. If you want to tile any procedurally generated textures, you might want to follow this guide. And hey, thanks for watching.